Welcome to Soccer As We Like It, the biggest and best fan channel in the United States, the channel for global and football fans. We are covering the Copa America 2024, which has been inaugurated and integrated with so many new countries. But at the same time, it seems to be a very big attraction in America, in America currently. Joining me is Houston and Denver's Red Army singing director, Louis. Welcome to the show, bro. Good to be here, man. Good to see you again. Right. You are... I would say one of the best uh, Copa uh, experts I know of. So I would, uh, yeah, glad <laughs> to have you on the show. That. Yeah, I'm definitely but, a fan. The last time we spoke, we were talking about um, Pan uh, Panama playing uh, Uruguay. That was a very good game. I would say I was impressed with Panama. I've never sat down to watch a Panama game. They got a lot of quality in the team. But we're going to go over some of the games that we played since our last conversation. And you could... Uh, you could tell me what you thought about that. Right, we'll start with Mexico and Jamaica, the reggae boys. What was your top four, Dagger? Mexico won, Jamaica nil. Um, yeah, a couple of thoughts on that. Number one, by Mexico standard, very poor, I thought, overall. Um, wow. Yeah, no, it, it, look, they're, they're a team that's expected to at least dominate the CONCACAF. Um, right. Obviously, they haven't in a while. The U.S. is been pretty dominant um mm. over the last few years and it's it's been a nice change of pace for sure but uh no this one for me um the thing that Jamaica have over over many teams in the CONCACAF and just many teams in general is is size and pace right. uh, they're not going to be very technical um they'll move the ball a little bit but it's it's not um their system is not you know, expected to, you know, to keep possession or things like this. Um, they know they're going to hit you on the counter. They know they're going to hit you hard. Um, and when they shoot, I mean, they're, they're putting everything behind that ball. Uh, yeah. Might as, might as well be Thor uh, smashing the ball. Um, so uh, I feel Mexico definitely get lucky um, in very, in several situations in front of goal. Um, Jamaica couldn't put it away, right. but you know, uh, yeah, very serendipitous win for me. And right now they're struggling. They're losing one. So you, 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 you expect, did you expect that result? I expected it to be better in Mex uh, for Mexico. But again, I, I thought the reggae boys um, could, uh, could, could also do something. And they did. They looked, you know, for their style, they looked pretty good overall. Okay. Um, I was about to say, Mexico is losing right now. All right. one zero. So uh, to Venezuela as well. So just not a good start to the tournament for them. Not a good start. And next game was USA Bolivia, the home crowd, the host, the uh new host hosting the con tournament. We're home to Bolivia. And I saw a beautiful girl from Pulisic, right? Nice bender, 25 yard curler. The whole country went uproar and arms in air, like you know, he's arrived, the new blah blah blah. Your take on that quickly. Uh, kind of the same, uh, honestly. Uh, the start, fantastic. Pulisic goal, amazing. Um, I thought he was he was definitely a standout player throughout the entire game. Um, yeah. but probably should have had two or three goals, missed some very very clear cut chances. Um, uh, second goal comes towards the end of the first half, so like good start, good first half overall. Then we start to see them lose the ball a little bit more. A lot of open chances missed. The substitutions I didn't really agree with. Um, again, it's Greg Berhalter. I've, 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 uh, my, my thoughts on him are known, but uh, didn't agree with the subs when they came in. Um, Pepe again should have scored multiple chances, didn't score. Uh, 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 McKinney goes out. We kind of lose the mood. Uh, the midfield Musiala goes out. It's, it's a bit more sloppy towards the end. Um, and a game that we should have won maybe four goals, maybe five goals. Right. Um, and it's two nil. So positive. I thought the Bolivian keeper kept the game re reasonable. It could have been, could have been, a, a, it could have been more than two nil. The Bolivian could keeper been, was on could have been way more than two nil. The goalkeeper had a couple of good saves overall, but the team, uh, look, Bolivia is not a team that, that is successful in, in Comnebol. They're definitely not successful on the world stage. Um, no disrespect, but we definitely should have, if you're a team that says you're going to compete and challenge for the title, you got to put away chances. That's it. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Our next game was your your country, Panama, your favorite country support, Par Par Panama against Uruguay. A good game. I mean, it was a, a, a wonderful long time. And uh, even Davin Nunes finally scored. Like, oh, bloody hell. He's, you know, he misses 
That That's guy, the, if he the, had the scored, arrogance. he would have won the title if he could the score. The absolute goals. arrogance, man. Panama put him in his place for 80 plus minutes. Yes. Um, he had some wide open chances. He absolutely bottled. He was poor overall. He has been. You see, like I, I, I said earlier, had he scored his goals, Liverpool have won the title this last season. Yeah. No. Look, it was just overall, it was very, very bad from him. I don't, I don't really rate him. But the he scores and then he's running off. He's doing this kind of stuff. I know, right? Exactly. Uh, and um, I will say this. Uh, Look, Panama played extremely, extremely well. We know this yes. is a team that's expected to lose. Uh, they're they're expected to be worse in the tournament, even worse than Bolivia, which I completely disagree with. Um, but what you're starting to see is a a structure that we've never played before. Um, I'm I'm extremely happy that you're being exposed to Panamanian football now, because oh, if you yeah, were that, 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 Panamanian that football that. ten years ago, five years ago, even you'd be like, oh, oh God, well, like what is this? <laughs> um we played extremely extremely well um had a couple of chances could should have put him away um would have at least kept the game tighter but hold uruguay to a one niller until the very end of the game two goals come very quickly um i will say uh diaz's goal was uh or sorry nunez's goal was extremely lucky yeah. It bounces off the center back and falls and in the right. Falls, it falls into and his he palm. gets the rebound. Good on him. Uh, the header, I thought, was... At least he got you on target good. this time. Yeah, no. After the, the so header, many chances. Header was very, very good to put them up 3-0. And then, of course, we come back to score the goal. Well, um, well good very, well crafted. Put on his left Very leg. good goal from Murillo. He's, he's one of our better players. So, um, right. He did very, very well. Right. Uh, and look, I think it's just... It, it's 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 a a very good look of what's to come for the rest of this group because uh, Argentinian TV, Brazilian TV, uh, American, Mexican, Colombian, everyone's saying the same thing, like, wow, watch these guys. Um, because, you know, they're not going to go quietly. Like, they came here to play. Like, prob you know, no, I don't think anyone thinks they're going to go run the run the tournament. But, I mean, everybody's extremely happy with the way they played, and I'm extremely happy right. with the way they played. Excellent. Next was up was next was Colombia, one of the favorites against Paraguay. Two, Colombia yeah. two, Paraguay one. Did you expect anything different? Uh, just more goals. Um, just more goals. Uh, Colombia played extremely, extremely well. James Rodriguez, man, what a comeback! What a comeback story for this guy. Two assists. Um, very well crafted assist. He had a couple of shots. Um, very good saves from the goalkeeper. Could have had. Uh, could have had a couple of goals. He ends with no goals, two assists. Um, but uh, nah, man, they were playing around Paraguay. I was very, very, very excited yeah. uh, watching them. Um, Paraguay, I think they they got one back kind of later. Yes, um, good goal. Um, but no, man, watch Colombia. They could Colombia. I think could win it. I think they're my dark horse to win it. I think a lot of people right. expect Argentina. Oh, yeah, um, obviously Brazil is always a favorite, even though they're struggling um, kind of at the start. We'll come to Brazil. But then, uh, but yeah, Colombia, man. I, I I think they I think they're gonna take it all. Okay, we go back to Group A. Peru nil. Uh, Canada won. That was a shock to me. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, if in the fact that Canada, I thought I I, I saw I expected nil nil because I thought okay. But Canada yeah, but, uh, deep. I think this game. I kind of I kind of put this game as a wash. Um, I think the red card changes it very very drastically um i don't think peru is so much better than canada um not really I, I think maybe fifa ranking wise i think they're ranked higher um but again it's another team that tends to struggle a bit in the common bowl better in the last couple of years um uh, in the last couple of months leading up to this tournament um but i expected it to be somewhat of a close game I think the only reason, though, that that really gives Canada the edge is that the uh, is the red card because look, with ten men, you know, you expect to create more chances. They did. They didn't finish those chances, so it could have been worse. It could have been mm. two, three, you know. Um, yeah. but yeah, kind of a kind of a stale game for me. I feel like after the after the, but they got the three points. That's important. Canada but they no, that's points. crucial. That's and yeah. it's another Concacaf team that gets three points, which is you yeah. know looks good on us. Right. Next game. Uh, the Samba boys, everyone's favorite, Vinny's, Vinny Jr., you know, 
the samba boys, the yellow, the yellow, yellow shirts and the blue shorts, Pele, you think of the great Rivaldo, Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, and we saw a damn squid. 0-0 zero, zero against Costa Rica. Difficult because Brazil was all over them. Some of the finishing was really, really poor. Some mm. of the finishing was really, really close. Um, they could have had a couple of goals there. Um, but yeah, overall could have could have played better. I think final third, really, they just had a lot of problems. Right. Uh, they got to solve right away. Um, I will say this though, the game, it was one zero. It was one zero. They call so back. You, so you you think Brazil deserved to get one goal there? No, one hundred percent. The 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 offsides goal from the from the header from the set piece. That's that's not offsides. That's not offsides. The player that is on there is a player in an offside position. He's not involved. He's not the. I guess the argument is that he is uh, he's uh, uh, impeding the goalkeeper, um, which I disagree one hundred percent. Um, and I know we're going to talk about it, but it is a direct precedent for what just happened in the Argentina game right. um, as well. Is there some uh, shenanigans, some <laughs> shenanigans. shenanigans, some FIFA Copa shenanigans, Comnebol shenanigans? Maybe. Right, Maybe. Right, right. It's really difficult to justify. The, the ref was quite strict on Brazil. A few tackles was like, okay, I, I mean, yeah, but... yeah. We'll see. All right, the next game was Chile, who have still not found a net. They lost 1-0 to Argentina to a very, very, very late goal. I saw some tackles like, referee going to do anything? You're going to bring a card out? What's going on? Chile nil, Argentina won. Yeah. What's that about? Uh, and again, this is kind of what I was talking about. I think the only reason that game does not end nil-nil is because of the referees, by far. Um, and I am never one to blame a ref, no excuses or anything like this for Chile. Um, the player gets stamped, cleats up, yep. sh should have been a red, not a red. Um, the player, uh, he misses the tackle and he drags. You know what I mean? I'm like, what the hell? Wrestling. Minimum yellow card. Um, you could, maybe you could argue that it's excessive. I don't know if you could make that argument for anything more than that, but at least should have been a yellow card. I'm pretty sure. I don't think it was. I think he, I think he just calls the foul there. Um, lots of little, lots of other little moments like this, but the goal at the end, the, he, he plays in, uh, I think it's Alvarez is there. He's got the center back on one side. He's got the uh, goalkeeper on the other side. It hits him and it deflects backwards. Okay, that's fine. That's clean. But the follow-up strike, basically every like everyone shifts. Two players come back right, and those right. two players go forward. So it's just the goalkeeper with two Argentinian players either side of him. And the ball goes in. That is off sides. If you want to talk about impeding the goalkeeper, no, they don't touch the ball. But he can't go left. He can't go right. He can't move in that space. He is he is impeded from making an attempt at a save. Maybe he saves it. Maybe he doesn't. But the fact that he couldn't move because of those players, or at least couldn't dive because of those players, that is an off. That's offsides. And so the uh, you take the Brazil game, and 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 strip a goal, uh, you know, for 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 impeding the goalkeeper when he doesn't when he's doesn't touch the ball, he's not involved in the play. And then Leo Messi's boys, same opportunity, and it's a goal. And this is, I think, the problem across Conca Cap because there was a there was another moment today involving uh two handballs in two different games that one resulted in a PK, the other one did not. So it's the, the inconsistency of, of officiating is becoming a more abysmal every time. The, definitely, I think. The the Copa at Latin American tournament, like there is kind of an expectation that these kind of moments will happen, but it's definitely happening more and more. And I think in the Euros, this has been a massive complaint um, as well. Um, it, it's just there, there's no consistency in rules across 
games within the same competition. And then there is a lack of consistency in VAR and how it's implemented and the rulings that VAR make. Um, and this is like, it's just making people so mad. And it's also letting referees get away with massive mistakes and, and have uh, justifications for, for clear, massive mistakes. Right. Um, but it seems, again, to kind of favor certain teams like Argentina. Um, and, and people are calling it out. Right. Now, Ecuador against Jamaica. Three, Ecuador three, Jamaica one. The reggae boys losing the second game is automatic. I would say goodbye and good night. Is is it is it lights out or they could still go in? And, in in the Copa, is there because you have the Euros, you have the first two go through and the best no four place. teams. Huh? No third place in the Copa. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Jamaica, they are are they technically finished? They've lost two games. They've conceded four goals and scored one. Yeah, no, they're, uh, well, so Mexico still have to play Ecuador. Yes. Um, and Jamaica have to play Venezuela. No, Venezuela has six points. So, yeah. Oh, no, shit. they beat Mexico. They're out. They're Mexico out. Lost. Mexico. Mexico Me lost. Uh, yeah, Mexico lost tonight. Um, Where and, was that game? Yeah. Well, no, this is exactly what I was talking about, these two games. Um uh, Jamaica, they it's it's one nil for the majority of the game, um, and they score two late goals, similar to the Panama game. Um, so three one, done and dusted. Uh, very much the same for Jamaica. Very counter attack. Very you know fast pace. Had a couple of uh, the goal that they scored was fantastic. Um, the striker plays in England. I can't remember for who. Oh, the Jamaica guy. Yeah, um, very nice turn, shot, goal. Um, uh, sorry, it's 1-1. So it's 1-1 for the majority of the game. Right. There is a, a handball by Ecuador in the box. Um, basically, uh, Antonio played for Jamaica. Yeah, Antonio, right. Uh, so basically, um, the Jamaican player goes to clear the ball, or no, goes to shoot the ball. The Ecuadorian defender puts his hands up, hits his hand, hits his face, hits his hand again. Uh, ref seven yards away, eight yards away, staring right at it. No call. Game goes on. Ball goes out of bounds. Then the VAR is like, you got to have a look. Goes, has a look. They tried to argue that the motion was to protect his face or that he was reacting to the ball, which... Again, this is a rule that we've seen implemented both ways. Um, oh, he's just he's not trying to make himself bigger. He's trying to protect his face. I don't agree at all, not in this instance. But again, in other instances that they say, no, that's not a thing. Protecting your face is not a thing. You put your hands up, you you hit the ball. That's a that's a that's a that's a handball. Um so it goes to the VAR. Then the then the VAR tells the ref to go have a look. Ref has a look. No penalty. Um, and then Ecuador, of course, go on to win the game. But, of course, they scored two more goals. Fast forward, 7 p.m., uh, 8 p.m. your time. Uh, Mexico, same thing. Shot. Player, hands up, hits it. This shot's not even on target, mind you. Right. The Jamaica yeah. shot was on target. This one is not. It's kind of wide. Throws his hand up, hits his hand, pen. Right away, no bar, no nothing. Pen. Now Mexico miss, so they still lose. But this is this is the across, inconsistencies. This inconsistency across. is what like dude, like fans, so Mexico like, can still qualify because they got three points. They have three the points. They have to. They have to win. Um, they have to win against. Um, they uh, have to Ecuador. play Ecuador. They have to win against Ecuador. Ecuador could. I, I would currently I would say Ecuador will probably win that game. Right, you think so? Venezuela have now literally got six points. They got six points. Yeah, wildly, uh, because that is not a that is not a country that tends to do well either. Right. Oh, so they've done. The, they're literally qualified already. So mm -hmm. yeah, is no. your hot with USA playing later tonight? 
USA and Panama. Two, you're literally no. two of your two of, uh, tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Um, who's your money on tomorrow? I mean, can you think Panama could surprise or hold or get a draw from that game? No, they could win. Where's that going to be played? Sorry. Where's that match? What venue? That match is. I want to say. Hold on. Where's that match? That match is going to be. Oh, Mercedes Benz, uh, Atlanta. 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 Yeah, great, great uh, place for a game. Um, but uh, unfortunately, there's been some some complaints about Don't the about the pitch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a football stadium. It's an American football stadium. So who plays yeah. there? Oh, okay. Uh, that is the Falcons, the Atlanta Falcons. Okay. So uh, just, uh, they I'm, had I'm, yeah, go they ahead. had the the MLS final and the Super Bowl there. Um. Uh. Like one right after the other. Okay. Yeah. Um. No, make no mistake. Panama can win this game. Um. And the U.S. needs to tread softly. Um. Your prediction? <sighs> difficult. Difficult. I'm hoping for good soccer. <laughs> is that all you're gonna say? A lot of people. That's games? all I'm gonna <laughs> say, man. Like, I, yeah, you know, as you say, you said earlier, Panama is my favorite team. It's not true. I hold equal love in my heart for my father's nation and my birth nation. Um, I would like to see them both do very, very well. So ideally, make your happy day, make your happy bunny be a two-two score. If here's what I'll say. If Panama won, I would be very proud. I would be very happy. Mm. Uh, if the U.S. win... Say um, they bump Panama 5-0. It, it's, it's, like, it's like this, right? It's like, it, it, imagine you have two sons competing against each other and one's right. the one. Like, you, you, you kind of expect the older one to win. You want the older one to show... Like Serena and Venus. Well... Um, and you'll you'll be happy for the older one. You're gonna root for him and, and pump him up when he wins. Uh, but man, if the younger one got his go, you, you know what I mean. You'd give you'd give the you'd give him that extra nod. You'd you'd right, let him right, know, right. like, hey, man, good I job. Think you know, beating the up crowd, on the crowd. <laughs> the crowd would be so much pumped up to push America over the line. Oh they, yeah, no, I think the, it is gonna be like. Everyone there is going to, the, the, the Panamans are going to be probably like, what, 2,000? If that, it's going to be sold out America. Uh, maybe more. Um, we've started, to, we've started to see, especially in the, in the, in the Christensen years, um, the manager. Right. Uh, we've started to see an uptick in, in Panamanians traveling for games. Um, there is a, you know, there's a sizable Pan, uh, Panamanian population in the United States, obviously not on the level of many Latin countries because we are so small. Um, but you know, there is a presence here and Panamanians are starting to, to travel more for the team, uh, and these kinds of things. So yeah, sh uh, you, you'll see some, uh, you know, maybe a section or two. Um, uh, but yeah, no, the expectation is that, uh, you know, it, it'll be a, it'll be an American home game because it is, it's in Atlanta. Um, yes. however, that being said, if you look at the numbers from the Bolivia game and again, it's Bolivia. We were expected to win, so take that into account. But not a lot of tickets were sold. There were a lot of empty seats, um, and uh, a lot of that is the criticism of the ticket prices. Ticket prices for this tournament are high. Really? Too high? They're very, they're really? very, very high. Um, I, I actually looked at tickets for the Panama-US game just out of curiosity. Hmm. Uh, nosebleeds. Like high, high, high up, starting eighty dollar minimum. No way. Not not including you know fees and and everything like that that you eighty have. for a nosebleed. That's for nosebleed. I yeah, no, was that um, 40, for, 40 for, bucks, USA, man. for USA Panama. And again, I expect it to be an extremely good game. I expect there to be a lot of interest, but still, um, you know, lower bowl, you know, first section seats are um like three hundred and fifty dollars minimum. Um, no, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, people are are very worried about the World Cup now and what that's going to look like. FIFA do a pretty good job of of kind of taking care of some of those prices. Um, right. But yeah, man, very very sad to 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 see. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how many people show up. It will be predominantly American fans, but no, this is going to be a tight game. If if anyone in the UK is looking for a good Copa game to watch, this one's going to be fun. 
it's going to be really fun to watch. Okay, Copa America. Even though you know the time is so that is uh, eleven. Uh, it is uh, that game is eleven o'clock. Four p.m. Time. here, five p.m. for you. Is that like? I think there's five, a six so so. On, it to... says eleven. Okay, it's going to be eleven p.m. UK. Be eleven yeah, o'clock not, not UK. That, that the worst in the world. Not the latest game ever. Yeah, you know? not the latest game, but uh, people yeah. want to go to bed early. And um... yeah, or hey, yeah, man, watch TiVo it, watch it the next day, whatever. Right, right. right. <laughs> so you know, it, it's so far is your money still on people like Colombia to get through to the knockout. So after this stage, it's quarterfinals, no round of sixteen, it's quarterfinals straight, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it goes straight towards the quarterfinals. So I think already qualified. I'm pulling it up right now. Venezuela. Venezuela is qualified. Argentina. FIFA's people are there. Argentina's qualified. Um, that's it. Um, because so group C is tomorrow. So uh Uruguay will play Bolivia, USA will play Panama. Um, Uruguay can punch their ticket with a win. Um, and then well, actually USA could punch could. their ticket with a win. They both could. USA and, and Colombia could be wrapped up tomorrow. Um, and then uh, Group D, the following day, Colombia needs a win. Uh, they are playing Brazil? No? Who are they playing? Yeah, Brazil is their next game. Um, so could wrap it up. Brazil could get one. And then Colombia could – if Colombia lose, they could still beat Costa Rica um, and get through. Uh, Costa Rica would have to beat Paraguay pretty significantly. Um, which I don't see happening. I think that game's going to be really close. Right. Um, yeah. So still some soccer to play here. Still early days. Um, so, but no. Uh, obviously, we expect Brazil. We expect Colombia. This Uruguay is probably going to go through. They'll beat Bolivia. The second place team is up for grabs. It's up for grabs. So we could start. We could obviously say Jamaica a good bye and good night. Yeah, they're going. Yeah, they're done. Right. They're done. All right. All right. Louis, it's been an absolute pleasure once again. We will be catching up for our, our, our updates when we start to get the when we start to see the picture for the quarter final, the quarterfinals draw. And we'll have a clearer picture and we will follow uh, the Copa America all the way to the finals. Real quick, uh Euros, England. Do you think they're gonna you still think they're gonna go all the way? I mean the, the draw, the playing Slovakia, the draw we've been around the 16. Right. Which yeah. is not a difficult fixture, but knowing their, England, their well, whole pathway, it doesn't look very difficult. Uh, is what I mean? I mean, they're not running into any heavy, heavy hitters until like no, late to quarterfinals, at least a round of eight quarterfinals. Right. You know, so uh, it, it's a strange one. It is a strange one because I think England have opportunities. But can they capitalize on the competition? What happened the... with uh, Foden? He's gone. Yes, he he had the family. I think he's, he's, uh, his, his wife was about to have a baby, I think. Oh. Baby. Okay. His third kid. And he wanted to be there and uh, had to re re return back. I would have told wife, like, I'm going to the football. Like, we'll have another one. <laughs> right, Czechoslovakia are out. Oh, uh, yeah. Ukraine out. But you see, the funniest thing, I don't know if you ever you came across it, everybody in uh, Belgium's group had four, four points, points, right? Everything. Yeah. Belgium four, Romania four, um, what was Ukraine four. I mean, I mean, what the hell? How is that but possible? But the Ukraine-Belgium game, did you watch it? I watched it. Yes, yeah. It's zero, How zero. four were Belgium? Belgium are poor. I don't know. They're so inconsistent, man. Believe that. But that, that's... What shows you the how amazing that group is because mm. if mm. Ukraine score one goal, they're mm. top of the group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, it, that's it, insane. It, it is insane. I've never seen that before. Where about everybody had the same points? Everyone, three are going through. One is going out because of goal difference, and they have a minus. And it, it, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> That's it. Yeah, no, that tournament, that tournament's heating up, man. It's getting very, it, very. It, it, it's getting uh, Croatia out. Uh, sadly, Croatia gone. Out. Yeah. Yep, Croatia gone. It's one of those things, unfortunately. But this Italy, is, uh, Italy got through by the skin of their teeth. That last minute goal against Croatia broke Croatia hearts. It really yeah, did break man. Croatia hearts. I was so sad for Luca. <laughs> yeah, I felt for him. I mean, he uh, he did miss a penalty, and. 
But the time frame between when he missed the penalty and when he now got the goal back was about yeah. two minutes. So superstar minute, yeah, superstar yeah, moment. Yeah. yeah, so it, it wouldn't Never have made much get difference on the skin of their teeth, third place. But you got to be able. When is the last minute? It's like uh, you got to put that last one in. That you last really effort. do. You, you really know, do. It, 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 because you know. Croatia, uh, Croatia. I, I just felt bad for them. I, I just felt bad. Like, come on, you come all yeah. this way, and Italy, Italy haven't lit. They haven't lit up this tournament by and by no means at all. But no, they just no, seem no. to grind. I, honestly, that. I don't see them getting far. I don't. No. I, they might be out in the next in the next round. <laughs> As the holders, <laughs> you think they'll be out in the next round? They really, they really could be. Honestly, like I don't think they, I don't think that they played particularly well. They they, they um, yeah, no, I expect uh, I expect a little bit more, honestly. Right. So you look at uh, my favorite group is Group E: Romania four, Belgium four, Slovakia <laughs> four. Everybody in Romania the group has four. top of the group. I mean, insane. so Romania scored four goals and conceded three goals. The goal mm -hmm. difference is one. Belgium scored two and conceded one. Goal difference one. They go second. Slovakia scored three and conceded three. Goal difference is zero. Ukraine yeah. scored two and conceded four. Goal difference minus. Yeah, insane. It's insane. I, I feel sorry for Ukraine. They did their best, but uh, at this moment in time. Gotta score, man. It, it's, really gotta score. It, so Czechoslovakia out, Ukraine out, Serbia out, Albania out, Scotland out. Poland and Hungary are out. Poland and Hungary out. Goodbye and good night. Yeah, done. Yeah, it's done. See them in a. Did they make it to the World Cup? Did you see Lewandowski's penalty? Yeah, he had to retake it. That was stupid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he made so many yeah. stutters and stutters. The keeper's got to move at that point. He, what's your right. take on that? Yeah, no. Um, this is a conversation I was having a while ago with uh, one of our goalkeeping directors. Um. Uh, a lot of the new the new rules, or at least you could move, but you can't come off the line. It's just rules in general surrounding PKs are starting to more and more favor the shooter, and and right. and really kind of constraining the goalkeeper, the goalkeeper. More, and more and more. Um, which is weird because it's like you, and again, like the the if PKs are not as easy as they look, but they're not. They're definitely not the hardest thing in football. So when you're when you're constantly making it easier and easier and easier to score, I, I don't know, man. It, it takes away a little something for me, you know. I, uh, definitely not as many big save moments. Definitely, you know what I mean. It's just it's just making it harder and harder on the goalkeeper, and I don't understand why. I don't get it. I think that. Uh, it's a, it's a weird way to go for me. Um, but right. yeah, a lot of the rules over the last two, three years, the kind of the changes around like uh, stepping off the line, retaking kicks, your movement, trying and to... And he did the exact same thing. The same routine, stop, he started, he moved, he started again, then took it. It was the same right. move. Like, does the did. momentum stop? Is that, isn't that the rule? Like his momentum has to keep going? Like, yeah. It's uh, yeah, very, very, very weird for me. But this, I mean, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Like the rules, the rules internationally are not consistent, but they're also not consistent within federations like UEFA, like Comnebol, uh, like Concacaf. Um, and it's like at some point we got to get together and like we got to agree on something. Like right. it, it's getting it's getting so so absurd, so ridiculous. Um, that just clear cut decisions for the everyday fan. Referees can't make these decisions anymore, and mm -hmm. I, it, it right. takes away from the game in a Definitely. very way. Definitely. So, as it stands, Euros there'll be a break. First game is going to be back on Friday or Saturday. Then the the, the Copa America carries on. I think uh, all the games will be finalized by weekend. I all the games, think so. I all the games so. for Copa will be about the weekend and start right. getting ready for the quarterfinals. Well, uh, the, all, everything's heating up. So by yeah, by next week we'll, we'll know the Euros who go who are going to be in the, the the final eight. You know, so yes, yeah, it's, it's 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 getting there. It's getting there. But, and yeah, then we got yeah. Paris. 
we got Paris coming up. That is literally <laughs> right there. That is right there. You know, but, um, you know, um, Louis, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Copa, uh, Copa experts, thank you for joining us, having you on our show tonight. Uh, awesome. We will catch up with you for the next updates when the next round of pictures coming through, which will probably be in the next, probably by Saturday night. We will go over where we are with Copa. We'll see who's now out and who's officially in. But so far, you've said it looks like Venezuela and Argentina already put their tickets to the quarterfinals. That's right. right. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. We've had a nice evening with Louis talking about Copa and there's going more Copa football to be to come up as we see and Europa, but follow our channel and we keep you posted and keep you updated on all the football going on. Thank you very much. Louis, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much, brother. I'll see oh, you soon. Take care, bro. Good night.